What happens in a society where there were no security cameras, no DNA testing, and definitely no lie detectors? What happens when word of mouth is the only guarantee of truth? For Miller, this veil of uncertainty led to nothing more than lies, manipulation and deceit. All because the townspeople of Salem had no way to reliably figure out the truth of what was going on. Instead, the truth was often fabricated or manipulated for personal gain, and deceit was rife as people aimed to deflect accusations and to blame others. In The Crucible, most of the characters choose to lie, either to themselves or to other people. Abigail often lies about her ability to see spirits with many of the other girls. John Proctor lies about cheating on his wife and then about hiding it. Even the judicial officers are lying, claiming to be pursuing justice in God's name as they bring about some terribly unjust outcomes. Hey team, just a reminder, if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. It really helps the channel out and our next upload could be on something taught in your next class. Thanks and back to the video. We might point to several reasons for the staggering amount of deception in The Crucible, like a broken justice system under which a woman accused of being a witch has no escape, even if she tells the truth and protests her innocence. We could also claim that lies generate other lies in order to cover up inconsistencies in the first account. Remember when John tried to cover up the fact that he had been covering up his affair? But what Miller is really getting us to question is what causes the need to lie in the first place. And for the citizens of Salem, the answer to that question is obvious. Fear. Fear underwrites all life in Salem, from the fear of being tried as a witch to the fear of losing your reputation. Fear causes the Salem community to manipulate the truth throughout the play. Let's take a look at some of this inaction in The Crucible. In Act 1, we begin to see how the religious authorities in Salem are able to determine what the truth is. This, in turn, has flow-on effects for the people of Salem and their own public perspectives and beliefs. So, what exactly does this mean? Basically, truth became a weapon that was defined by collective beliefs and was either used to manipulate the individual or was, in turn, manipulated by the individual. And what kind of beliefs were prominent in the theocracy of Salem? You guessed it, Christian fundamentalist ideology. Abigail fabricates the truth by exploiting this Christian ideology when she yells out in an accusatory tone, I saw Goody Osborne with the devil. I saw Bridget Bishop with the devil. It's much easier to get people to believe you when they are too afraid to question what you are saying. The accusatory tone is particularly important, though. Note how Abigail is preying on the religious community's fears to gain power over Goody Osborne. In this way, manipulating the truth can be a method of gaining power and control. This is a deep reflection of some of the problems that Miller was facing in his own day when the McCarthy government was preying on America's fear of communism to gain political power. For a more detailed analysis of Miller's context, check out our lesson on context. Let's move on to Act 2, where we get a better sense of just how vulnerable the truth is to manipulation. In this act, Miller provides us with a really helpful recurring motif which is just a fancy way of saying a phrase, idea, or other element that recurs throughout the play. Miller refers to truth through a metaphor several times as the characters discuss the weight of truth. This metaphor tells us something really important, that the truth for the citizens of Salem was not always fixed 
objective and factual. Instead, the truth was kind of like a dodgy scale. Sure, the truth might be that a particular woman is not a witch, but if you throw enough manipulation, lies and deceit onto the scale as well, you might just be able to tip the scales enough to have that same woman convicted. In Act 3, we are given a closer look into how this flawed system of truth manipulation interacts with the justice system in Salem. As the court begins to question John Proctor, Judge Danforth poses a series of rhetorical questions, which are questions that don't expect a reply and are instead used for their dramatic effect. Witchcraft is an invisible crime, is it not? Therefore, who may possibly be witness to it? So what exactly does Danforth mean when he says this? Basically, he's making the claim that such a crime is largely committed apart from the community's knowledge. Danforth asserts that only the witch and the victim can attest to the guilt of the witch. However, since there is little likelihood the witch will choose to incriminate herself, Danforth maintains that the court must turn to the victims to find the truth. Danforth is making the case for why the accuser must be trusted, regardless of whether the accuser can produce any evidence for the crime. Instead, allegations and beliefs alone can serve as legitimate causes for indictment. As an audience, we are aware of the dramatic irony here, which is when we know something that some or all of the characters on stage do not. We know that most of the accusations thus far cannot possibly be genuine. We also can see how flawed Salem's system of determining the truth is in this scenario, as it often draws upon the lies of teenage girls or paranoid citizens to decide the guilt of others. Finally, during the conclusion of Act 4, we see an example of how integrity or a desire to preserve and honour the truth may actually still manifest itself under the manipulative conditions in Salem. John Proctor chooses truth over the fabricated lies of his community. Instead of confessing to a lie in order to gain his freedom, he chooses to die whilst knowing that he maintained his honesty and the goodness of his personal integrity. The allegorical stage direction, or a stage direction that represents a broader moral lesson about the play, is shown as Proctor tears the paper. By symbolically tearing the lies and deceit of the community and its beliefs, Proctor chooses his own private truth over what the public perceives as being true. Unlike others who lie and deceive in order to save themselves, Proctor willingly sacrifices himself to maintain this truth. So what message do you think Miller leaves us at the end of the play? Perhaps he is suggesting even though our legal and social systems may create conditions which make manipulation of the truth inevitable, we don't have to participate. There is an honourable path and staying true to our understanding of what is true and noble is what's most important. For Miller, as for John Proctor, saving our soul is much more important than simply saving our own skin. We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons, check out our other videos.